Hello and welcome to my channel. Believe it or not, but this is a robot arm. At least this was a robot arm. This is my old build around 4 years old, where I built 5 axes out of 7 axes. But afterwards uh, I disassembled these two motors because I wanted to use it in another project. But finally I have not used them, so I put them here, like this. All the parts are here, but uh, some of them disassembled. And now what I would like to do, I would like to refresh the design of this robot arm, reprint the parts. The original parts was uh, 3D printed out of the PETG and I would like to print it out of PLA because it's uh, simpler. And I would like to finish this robot arm, I would like to make all seven axes. I really like the original idea, that's why I would like to continue with this robot arm, even if it's a four years old idea. The original design was made in the Fusion 360. And now the refresh design is in the Shopper 3D. So far I really like this uh, CAD, Shopper 3D, even though it lacks some quite basic features. But the user friendliness of the Shopper 3D is really really cool. I truly like the idea to run it on the iPad, it's super intuitive and I think all the CAD uh, programs should do this. Let's see what is in the box. Uh, this I don't really need, this was the support for one of the axes. In the original design I used the O drive to power the motors. This is the fence, I'm going to use them to cool down the drivers and also motors. Some spare belt. Electronics, we would need to rebuild it. So let's see, this is the axis 1, this is axis 2 and 3, and this is the axis 4 and 5, which is completely disassembled. You see, there is a differential drive over here, and there is a planetary gearbox inside these pieces. It's a super bulky piece. Huh? It's quite heavy. There is no motors here, just plastic and uh, some bearings, but still it's super heavy. It's actually beautiful. Some other belts. This is cool. I think I have all the belts which I need. From this old robot arm I'm going to keep uh, all non-3D printed parts. So especially belts, bearings and motors. The encoders and uh, or drives I don't need. Actually most of the parts in the new design are going to be more or less the same some of them are this exactly the same as on the old design, so I could uh, uh, just use the uh, old parts, but I think I'm going to reprint it. I don't have the good answer why, but I'm going to reprint them. It's almost unfair that it's so fast to disassemble and so slow to assemble. Another thing which is unfair is uh, it's so easy to make the mess and so difficult to clean it. Now the only axis 1, 2 and 3 left. Also, let me put you the video how this robot worked uh, before. Here one of my old video where I were testing this robot. Look, it's quite impressive actually. I really would like to rebuild this robot arm. Maybe one of the reasons why I stopped working on this robot arm is because first of all the wiring is a mess, there are a lot of wires. Now I'm going to use a controller with a daisy chain connection, like this uh, the wiring is going to be simple and it's going to be controlled through the one single CAN bus. And uh, in this version, in the old version, the O drives they controlled through the serial port. So you need to connect serial port to each O drive. By the way, here inside there is a planetary gearbox. This one I rotate quickly and this one rotates slowly. Or let me rotate this one. I think there is something like 4 to 1 gear reduction inside. Oh, now you can see the planetary gearbox. So I cannot take out this screw because of this part. So this means that in order to disassemble completely the axis 2 and 3 I need to disassemble the axis number 1. This is unfortunate. But uh, it's like this. And I know that in the new design it's the same. I have cleaned a little bit the table, so we can continue with the axis number one. Here again you can see the belt reduction and afterwards inside this piece there is a planetary gearbox. Quite big one. Motor with encoder. And now I think I should be able to pull out the sun gear. 
Oh, yeah. And you see the planetary gearbox. Now I need to take out the half of the planet carrier. And now I need to dismount the screw here, 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 here. And one screw behind this planet and another screw behind this one. So here's the screw behind the planet. Wow, this was complicated. And all this in order to dismount the screw over here. The motor is free. Another motor is free. We don't need this O drive anymore. Another O drive with a plenty of wires, which I don't need anymore for this project. Another quite important and quite expensive piece is this slew bearing over here, cross roller bearing. I also plan to reuse all these small bearings. Also in this design, I have used some double pins. My 3D printers are working at the background to print more parts for this robot arm. And this is the old uh, axis 4 and 5. And I would like to test if the planetary gearbox and also the bevel gears, what kind of uh, load they can support. To do this, I have attached this aluminum beam. And we can either push with this aluminum beam on the scale, or we can attach some weight at the end of this aluminum beam and try to lift it. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to drive it manually. I can go up, down, or I can go left, right. But left, right is not interesting. What is interesting is up, down, like this. I can go left, right, or I can go up, down. And we're going to do this until we break something. Let's start directly with the two kilos. The length of this arm is approximately half a meter. I hope that it's going to handle at least two kilos, because if not, it's going to be really bad. Now let's try three kilos. And now let's try four kilos at approximately a little bit more than 50 centimeters length of the arm, because 50 centimeters is up to here, not up to center of mass. I think it's going to fail now. Oh, not yet, not yet. And now the five kilogram. Now it should break. Oof, still holds. So before trying six kilo, let me just check that everything works like it should. Yeah, I don't feel any problems with the gears. And now five kilos plus one kilo, six kilo. Ooh. It's difficult to hold these pulleys. Better gloves for the grip. Just look how much I should turn it before it starts to go up. Six kilos. Let's try to push it a little bit harder, like this. Da, 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 da. It's not breaking. Why it's not breaking? 30 newton meters. It can handle 30 newton meters. So three kilogram meter, even a little bit uh, more, because I don't account the weight of this bar. I don't account that the weight not exactly at 50 centimeters, but a little bit shifted. I don't account the weight of the washers and still can handle it. Uh, something broke and I know what is it. Aha. So if we look carefully over here, we can see that my contraption is not really good because the bevel gear, this one is higher than it should be. And that's why there is a wear on the teeth over there 
and also over there. Let's disassemble it, look at the bevel gears, look at the planet gears and see if there is some damage and how much damage there is. So this is the bevel gears and we can see quite heavy damage on the gears over here, on this side, also this one, this is broken and over here you see this teeth is bended. So I'm pretty sure that this is because of the misalignment of these gears during this test. The question is also why there is this misalignment? Maybe because I fixed uh, everything not really parallel perpendicular like it should be or there is some other damage inside these parts. I don't see any damage on the sun gear, neither on the planet gears. And the same for the other side. No visible damage here. I have disassembled completely this module. The only damage which I found is on the bevel gears. And I'm sure that this problem is only because of the bad alignment of these gears. Why I'm sure that uh, the bevel gear was not uh, aligned perfectly is because of the damage. If you look the damage on the teeth over here, only on this side of the teeth, there is no da damage here. Also, I would like to tell you how you can win the original Jetson Nano developer kit. For this, you need to do three things. First of all, to subscribe to my channel, if you are not. Second, you need to subscribe to the NVIDIA developer program. This is free of charge. This gives you many different advantages over here. And I think the main one that this allows you to use quite uh, interesting and complicated NVIDIA software like Isaac Sim. And the third point is to fill the small form like this. Uh, if you win this Jetson Nano, I know uh, where we should send it. So subscribe to my channel, subscribe to NVIDIA developer program and fill a small form. And just to be clear, after this raffle, all this form which you filled on the third point, I'm going just to delete them. So I'm not going to use them to spam you. So participate in this raffle to win the Jetson Nano developer kit and also subscribe to the NVIDIA developer program. I have started the assembly with the motors like this. So on the motor I put the magnet for the encoder, the spacer and the driver board on top of it. Three motors are assembled, this is for the axis 1, 2 and 3. And for other motors, for other axis, we're going to take care of them another time. I have prepared the cables and also I have updated the firmware on these uh, controllers and I put the ID number 1, ID number 2, ID number 3. So now everything is prepared for the assembly. And here there are the parts for the axis number 1 and the bearings. By the way, all the parts was 3D printed in this position. I hope that the cable which I prepared are going to pass through this hole because this is the smallest hole and if it does not pass here I would need to resolve the entire cable. It comes through quite easily actually. So perfect. So this is how the assembly progress. So the motor is going to be fixed here and it's going to rotate this pulley which is going to be connected with the belt to this pulley which is going to rotate this sun gear. By the way in this design I use the double pins. And here comes the trickiest point. Over here there is this screw. Uh, actually the screw is going from the other side. There is a nut there. And this nut is going to be covered with this piece over here. So I would not access to it. And uh, this screw and nut holds these two pieces, this one and this one together. So that's why I should install these motors before assembling the axis number one. So this part is fixed with the screws. Now the planets goes over here. Next the ring gear. It goes over here. Okay, this already starts to look like something. So now we just need to mate this part with this one. Which should not be difficult if I have not forgot to put some screws, nuts or something. And I also should put the lubrication for the gears. I have put the grease where it should be. I use a Teflon based grease. I think it works uh, well with the plastic parts. The belt is tensioned with this pulley and in order to tension more or less this belt you need to change this pulley. So you need to reprint this pulley with slightly bigger or smaller diameter. 
it works fine and it's a really reliable solution. So that's why I decided not to go with something complicated, but just to use the 3D printed parts, which you can reprint. Now the belt is tensioned maybe a little bit too much. Next, this cover. And fix it with the screws over here, and one screw here and one screw on the other side. And I have bolted this piece. Also, I have put these two profiles like this it can stand because there is a wire which is coming out so it cannot stand on this surface. And so here's the axis number one completed. So the axis number one is completely finished. The axis number two and three is not finished yet, but we're going to finish them next time. And I hope that next time we're also going to finish the axis four and five. And like this for the video, which is after another video, would be left only the axis six and seven. So I hope that we're going to finish this project really quickly. As usual, the files for this build are going to be available through my Patreon page. And by the way, huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you. You are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects, and see you next time.